been maybe like two weeks since you guys have gotten a vlog, roughly two weeks. Um, and that is because I'm finally flying out for my birthday trip. I am doing yet another solo trip. Um, everyone's always like, oh my goodness, why would you want to spend your birthday alone? Like, why would you want to travel alone? If you have not yet done a solo trip, highly recommend you trying it out before judging those who do it. It is so much fun. You don't have to answer to anyone. You literally can make an itinerary based on everything that you want to do. It's a very selfish experience and I really think we should all take more advantage of it. Of course it has its downsides just like everything else in this world but you really just have to make the best of your experiences. So with that being said, I am taking another solo trip. This time around, I'm going to Morocco and I'm so freaking excited, you guys. I've had this trip planned for since last year sometime. I've made it a point to take an international trip for my birthday each year. So far, they've always been solo trips just because it's easier for me to plan everything just when I'm dealing with one person. Um, but maybe down the line, I will uh, do a group international trip. But again, for right now, it's just little old me. I'll be there for about a week and a half, so almost two weeks. Don't even ask me why I chose to stay for so long. I literally just looked up the cheapest flights, like the cheapest time to fly. And it was just cheaper for me to stay an extra couple of days and it worked out that way. So... I'm gonna do that, but I feel like a week and a half is just enough time for me to get everything in that I want to. My itinerary is literally jam-packed. There's no wiggle room. Personally, I'm a big planner and I like creating itineraries and just like filling them to the brim, leaving very little wiggle room. Um, I don't know, that's just how my mind works. I want to make sure that I see everything that I want to see and do everything that I want to do, so the itineraries just help me do that. Um, some of my friends say that I should start a like travel agency or be like a travel agent. But I really just love planning trips. I'm taking a nighttime flight, which is pretty unusual for me. I usually fly out in the morning, but my flight leaves at 10 p.m. tonight. Um, I have a car coming to pick me up at 7 p.m. So that will get me to the airport around 7.45. And I just want to give myself some leeway time just in case anything happens. And I'm so proud of myself, you guys. I fit two weeks worth of clothing into one carry-on so i have my carry-on suitcase i have a book bag and then i have a purse i literally packed so much i won't even have room to bring anything extra back to the states with me so i may have to leave some things in morocco but i just wanted to make sure that i i would rather overpack than underpack because you can always just like leave things there and i know a lot of people think of the reverse like they would rather underpack and just buy what they need once they get there. But I don't know, I just have a fear of not being able to find what I need when I get to a new country, so I'd rather just bring it with me and if I have any excess, just leave it there because these aren't really, it's nothing that I really like care deeply about and that I would miss if I left it in another country, so that is kind of my sentiments around packing for travel. I've got about two hours before I leave, so I'm just going to eat. Um, because I want to avoid buying airport food, so I'm going to eat now, um, and then I'll check in with you guys once I get to the airport. How much is it? Uh Alright guys, so I made it to my gate. I don't even know if you can hear me because it's very loud and chaotic in this section of JFK. I don't think I've ever taken an international flight out of JFK, it's always been LaGuardia, but this is a hot mess. They definitely need to update um, the international departure section of JFK because this, this is not it. But anyways, got here, had to spend $105 to check my bag. Um, even though I had carry-on allowance, my bag was 2 kilograms over the allotted amount. I think it has to be like 10, um, 10 kgs. I think that's the right unit, but... Um, yeah, mine was 12 so I had to pay $100 to check it. I could have taken some things out and checked it for free, but I literally had nowhere else to put those things, and I couldn't fit it in my book bag because I literally, I probably overpacked a little bit, so it was my fault, so whatever. I had to spend the money to do that. The old me would have been very irritated by that. <laughs> probably, I'm still a little bit irritated, but I'm not going to let it ruin my trip. And now I'm in this very, very hot section of the airport. It's literally like 90 degrees. I'm probably sweating it's so hot the lighting is awful I'm complaining so much I'm sorry you guys I am thankful I am blessed I'm grateful for the experience I'm gonna stop complaining now because that's just gonna ruin my whole trip it's gonna ruin the vibe and that's not the vibe I'm trying to be on so we're gonna have 
a great experience. I will probably check in with you guys when I land in um, Lisbon because I really need to be paying attention to my surroundings and making sure I don't miss my flight because if my check bags get lost somewhere along the way, we're going to have a problem. Maybe like 30 minutes ago, I'm in Portugal right now. I think my layover is like three hours. I don't know where, which gate we're gonna be boarding at, so I'm waiting for them to post that. A little bit nervous because I paid for like international um, data on my phone plan and it's not working that great. So I was gonna try to call AT&T to see if they can troubleshoot, but they're not open yet because of the time difference. So hopefully by the time I get to Morocco, I'll be able to call them and like, fix it hopefully it's working <laughs> the way that it's supposed to also you guys this universal adapter has been a lifesaver i just got it and i'm mad i didn't have it sooner but definitely get this if you are a traveler hey guys i'm still in portugal i literally would have already landed in morocco by now had the plane left when it was supposed to but um, been waiting here for like three going on four hours finally asked the desk attendant and they said that something was wrong with the original plane that we're supposed to be on so they're waiting for another plane to arrive but I can tell everyone is kind of like freaking out in their perspective languages I don't understand anything that anyone is saying but there's definitely some franticness going on with it and I would say normally when I travel solo like not much goes wrong everything pretty much goes according to plan but between having to check my luggage and paying that additional $100 which really hurt my feelings um, and then having a super delayed flight. So far it's off to a slightly rocky start but thankfully the place that I'm staying at allows for late check-in. Um, I'm just trying to get in contact with them now so I can let them know roughly what time I'll get there. We inform all passengers to Marrakesh until the flight 1454. This flight is delayed due to delayed arrival and so yeah they just finally made the announcement that our flight is delayed until 4 30 it was originally scheduled to leave at 12 30 so that is a pretty significant delay but i'm gonna go try to find some food so i landed in morocco around 7 30 p.m and arrived at my hostel around 10 p.m i booked a hostel for this full trip to experience it for the first time but after arriving i quickly realized hostels are not for me so i scrambled to find an airbnb and made plans to leave the hostel in the morning i didn't get any footage of the hostel but i will link it in the description it's high rated but I just had to learn that hostels are not for me all right you guys day two in Morocco and boy do I have to update you guys <laughs> but I'm in a public place so um, I'll do that later I think that jet lag is really getting to me I woke up around 8 this morning had breakfast at my hostel um, and literally went back to sleep I went back to sleep until like 11 30 and finally got up and was like okay you know what, I need to get up and experience Morocco. So I'm out right now. I walked to Bahia Place. I think that's how you pronounce it. It was like a 10 minute walk, not even 10 minutes from my hostel. Um, and I'm about to hop in line and grab tickets. But the line is so long right now. And I wanted to hop on and update you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm at Bahia Palace. It's about $7 USD to get in, 70 uh, Moroccan dirhams. I'm gonna see if I can take some pictures. It's pretty crowded, so I don't know if I will be able to like set up my tripod and stuff, but I don't know, we'll see. I'm really just gonna try to like take in as much as I can so I may not get as much behind the scenes, but we are here and we're gonna enjoy ourselves. All right, you guys, so I had to speed walk through the whole palace because <laughs> 
I slept in because I decided to take that nap I didn't have enough time to really like go through the entire thing the way I wanted to so now I have to rush back to my hostel get all my luggage find a taxi and um, hightail it to my Airbnb so that I can make it to my pottery class on time I'll probably check in with you guys once I get to my Airbnb just so I can get settled and like get my life together I finally made it to my Airbnb it has been a day it has been a day. I'm gonna have to recap with you guys everything that has happened. Um, my second day here in Morocco, um, probably when I get back. I'll do a recap when I get back because I have a pottery making class at three um, and knowing me, something's probably gonna happen and I'm struggling with the taxis right now so I'm gonna leave a little bit earlier just to give myself some buffer time. Um, I'm also starving so I'm hoping that there's somewhere close to eat near the pottery class. It's an uh, Asian technique, it's like snake. And this one is good if you want to change your form, playing with your form. without the shades on so <laughs> I'm just wearing them to talk to you guys um, but today has been such an eventful day it started off kind of slow and I was a little bit worried at first it did start off a little shaky but after going to um, Bahia Palace and having a couple of people take photos of me and just like having the courage to ask people to take photos of me because I did bring my tripod but my freaking remote clicker was dead so it was pretty much useless um, so I didn't have to ask a couple of people to take my photos when you're asking people to take your pictures you have to stay ready so you don't have to get ready because you don't have time to like position yourself make sure you look cute and whatnot because you're wasting these people's time um, so pro tip stay ready so you don't have to get ready but now I'm having an early dinner it's going on six o'clock so I guess not that early. Um, and then I'm gonna call it a day. I have to get up super early tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is my birthday and I'm super excited. And um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great day. Oh, it's here already. That was so fast. Thank you. Okay, so starting from the entrance, here is the little living room space or common area. They do have a massive TV in here. The Airbnb host texted me right before I got here like, oh, we got a new couch and a new TV. I'm like, ooh, fab. <laughs> um, super cute decoration. Here's the kitchen and it actually has a washer, which I'm really excited about because it's a little warm. So your girl might get a little musty here and there, but here's the kitchen. Cute. Here is the terrace area, which I was just just in this area filming, but here it is. Definitely gonna take some photos out here. A lot of greenery, very pretty. But close that. Only thing is, I don't know how to lock that, so hopefully no one wants to bother me tonight, but we're gonna go ahead and close this. All right, all my stuff is kind of just thrown over there. I'm gonna organize it later, but here is the bathroom. Nice, very clean. Hey guys, that's the bathroom. And then here is the bedroom. So cute. And this little bow is so cute. And then another TV that I probably won't use. And then, 
Ooh, a separate mini terrace. How cute is this? Wow, I didn't even see this here, but yeah, another terrace. But let me give you guys the rundown of what happened. So first of all, from Portugal, my flight was delayed like three hours. So I arrived in Morocco uh, like four hours later than I was supposed to. So when I got here, it was nighttime. I chose to stay at a hostel for the experience. A lot of people, like if you just research solo travel, a lot of people actually recommend hostels as a way to meet strangers on your travels, make friendships, long lasting friendships actually, and just find people to do things with around the city that you're in. So I was like, all right, I'm adventurous. I love meeting people. Like, let's book a hostel and hopefully we'll connect with someone um, and kind of just have like a wingman throughout the trip. I don't even know why I did that. I don't even know why I did that. So let me just disclaim this right here. There was nothing wrong with the hostel. It was actually very, very clean. And if you look at the reviews on Hostel World, I think they have like a 9.5 or something like that they're pretty they're pretty highly ranked in all the reviews um, like say good things because it is a great hostel but if you're someone like me who is I guess quote-unquote super bougie hostels are probably just not for you even if you get an individual room you're still gonna be sharing a bathroom in most hostel situations so if you're bougie if you're kind of like uppity hostels are not for you but if you're low maintenance and you kind of just go with the flow kind of just go with the vibe um, and don't really need much definitely recommend the hostels but I'm gonna be honest with you guys I'm <laughs> I hate to admit it sometimes I love to play it coy but I was texting my mom and she was like you knew damn well you was too bougie to book a house I don't even know why you did that every time I travel I mostly book an Airbnb just because it comes out cheaper than booking at a hotel and um, I usually book a pretty nice Airbnb so it has all the amenities and everything that I would need um, kind of in the same way that you would get at a hotel oh oh let me back up let me back up so I landed in Morocco at about eight I feel like yeah it was like around eight and I already knew that getting a taxi from the airport to the Medina area was going to be difficult because I had research beforehand and they said that taxis usually upcharge if you get it from the airport. So me, you know, me trying to be cheap, trying to finesse a little bit. I was like, okay, maybe if I ask around, like I will be able to get a cheaper um, taxi. So I get out there, I go to the police and I'm like, hey, where can I get a taxi? He's like, okay, if you buy, I'm going to let you know if you buy it here at the airport, it's going to be like... 100 to 150 Moroccan dirhams. I'm like, okay, cool. Where can I find like a cheaper taxi? Like the actual price taxi, which would be like 40, 40 dirhams. And he was like, okay, if you walk maybe like two blocks away from the airport, you could just wave a taxi down, tell them to take you to the Medina. And of course it'll be much cheaper. Y'all, the tears started welling up in my eyes because it is dark. I'm solo female traveler and he wants me to walk two blocks. Granted, he was very, very kind and honest with me with telling me like I could get a cheaper price if I go a little bit further. So he showed me the direction to like walk towards and he had to tell me this maybe like five or 10 times because I was just so nervous. So he had to keep repeating himself to make sure I understood what he was saying. But after like 10 minutes of talking in circles to this police, I finally was like, all right, I'm just gonna start walking. So I start walking to leave the airport and I'm walking behind this woman and like really no one, no other travelers are like walking towards that way because all the other tourists got the taxis at the airport or they already had um, like airport transfers. I see another like security guard or whatever. So I go ask him the same question I just asked the policeman and he's like, oh, let's just keep walking up. Um, I knew I wasn't getting far because I was like, I don't feel comfortable walking this far from like civilization because no one else is walking around and I just don't feel comfortable. I've been in Morocco for less than two seconds. Like this just not, it doesn't seem safe. Um, even though it was, the police assured me that it was a, a safe area and like just from being here the two days, it feels really, really safe. But I was nervous and I wanted to be precautious. So I walk maybe like 10 more steps and his taxi is like driving towards the airport so i like wave him down and i ended up paying the airport sur surcharge anyway because that's the way he was heading um so i paid 100 dirhams to get from the airport to the medina and the hostel that i was staying at is not accessible by car so it's like in an alleyway in the medina so he drops me off First of all, he didn't even really know where the hostel was, so he had to use my phone GPS. So he took my phone, which was 
scary because I'm a solo female traveler getting in the car with this random man and he now has my phone. There are no visible locks on the door. So I, I was just winging it, you guys. Don't be like me. <laughs> Don't be like me. But he has my phone. He's using the GPS to get to the hostel. And then he calls someone because he's trying to figure out where the hostel is. And she explains to him that the hostel is not accessible by car. So I would have to get out and walk the rest of the way, uh, which it was like a five minute walk or something like that. He translates on my phone because he speaks Arabic and French and I speak neither. So he translates on my phone like, hey, you can get a gentleman to whenever you need it like the, tr the direct translation was like when you need it you can get a gentleman to take you to your place for 20 dirhams and i'm like okay cool he's telling me i could just call a taxi and ask them to take me wherever for 20 dirhams like thank you for the tip that's what i'm thinking he said I feel like there's like something in my nose and we get there and all these guys like are surrounding the taxi because they're trying to figure out like how to get me to the hostel and I, I have it on my phone so I'm like I'm fine like I can get there by myself but it is a, a dark alleyway with like um shops like a suit so he's like okay this guy can take you to the hostel you'll just pay him 20 dirhams and I was like no I don't need him to take me to the hostel because I have it on my phone like I'm fine and the guy starts walking me to the hostel anyway so I FaceTime my mom because I'm in this dark alley I was anxious um, there were so many people still out and about it was like nine at this point so I call my mom on FaceTime while I walked there I wasn't intentionally walking next to him but he was like talking to me I'm like looking around trying to find the hostel and he's like no come this way this way and my mom was like girl don't follow that man don't follow that man and I'm like I'm not really following him but I have to go this way to get to the hostel but he's still like come on come on and I'm looking around, my GPS said that I passed the hostel. So I stop, he keeps walking, um, and I'm like, no, I think it's back this way, I think it's back this way. And there were like a group of guys next to me, he was like, oh, what are you looking for? And they see me like looking around and they're like, oh, what are you looking for, the hostel, the hostel? And I'm like, yeah, and they're like, oh, it's just up that way. And I was like, oh, that's weird, my GPS is wrong. So I walk a couple more steps, get to the hostel, and the guy is telling me like, oh, um, 100 dirhams. And I was like, no, I'm not paying you because you, I didn't need you to walk me to the hostel. I was going to get here by myself, but you proceeded to keep walking with me. So that's your fault. I'm like, no, I'm not paying you. So I enter the hostel. The lady at the check-in is talking to the man because the man is trying to get her to force me to pay him the money. And she's like, oh, he said that you owe him 20 dirhams. Um, he told, he said that the taxi man told you to pay him 20 dirhams. I said no. I told the taxi driver I did not need this man. This man proceeded to walk over here. So no, I'm not paying him. Like, go ahead and check me in. I'm sorry, sir. You you did all that. That but that was on your that was your own doing. So the check-in lady goes to the man and she's like, like, I don't know what you want me to do. That was outside of the hostel. Like that has nothing to do with me. So he leaves and you can tell he's irritated. So at that point I was nervous because I'm like, if I leave this hostel, he now knows where I'm staying and he could like I don't know jump me or something when I leave the hostel be because I'm not I didn't pay him granted I don't think that um, the natives here are like that they are very very friendly very kind people but just when you think about someone who's frustrated and they now know where you live as a woman who's solo like that is something that crossed your mind so it did the thought did cross my mind there were three other people already in uh, my room two younger um, like recent grads they were here doing like a work away program which I thought was really cool and one girl was from Jersey actually so connection there so the setup was very nice and I think everyone that was staying at the hostel was very friendly but the shower and the bathroom I I just couldn't do it like it wasn't dirty at all the, the hostel itself was very very clean very welcoming very comfortable but the bedroom actually my bedding was dirty um, so I, <laughs> I feel so bad saying this, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The hostel itself was clean, but I do believe that my bedding and my sheets maybe had not been changed. And I'm like super itchy right now. I don't know if it's like a mind over matter thing, but I am itchy. It could have been the bed or it could be mosquitoes, but I haven't really seen any mosquitoes. So I don't know. The bed had like crumbs in it and like other people's hair strands um in it and yeah it just didn't look really clean so i took the sheet that i took from the airport you know how they when you do uh long travels they'll give you the blanket in the bag so i took 
one of those. I had like a long sleeve hoodie. I put it over my head and like tied it. And I had on long like knee high socks and long pants just to make sure like every inch of my body was covered. Um, and yeah, I, I did sleep in the bed because I had nowhere else to go. But immediately that night, I was looking for Airbnb. I think I messaged like four Airbnbs to see if they could get me in today because I was like, I absolutely cannot stay here. Um, and thankfully I was able to book one at like 12 a.m. last night and so I'm here. But that is everything that has happened thus far in Morocco. So it did start off a little rocky and I was a bit nervous, but I think all in all, I am gonna have the time of my life. And I think that being in a friendly country is I guess I'll say a friendly city because I haven't experienced the entire country yet, but um, being in a friendly city is definitely helpful um, and it makes the experience all the more better because I, I could have been out on my behind a couple of times, but people have just noticed me being in distress and have lended a helping hand, so I really, really appreciate that. Pro tip, if you know you're a little bit on the bougier side, if you're a little bit more high maintenance, just go ahead, pay the extra money, get an Airbnb or a hotel. Um, hostels just may not be for you and that is okay. It's not for everybody, that is okay. I'm recording on my phone now because my camera died, so sorry if the quality is crusty, but I'm about to take the longest shower of my life because I am so itchy for some reason. I can't tell if they are mosquito bites or what. I do have one big bite on my leg. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. Hopefully it doesn't get worse, but yeah, I'm about to scrub the freak out of my skin. Um, and then I'm gonna get my luggage and stuff situated. Tomorrow I am getting picked up around 5 a.m. I think I'm doing, it's my birthday. First of all, my birthday is tomorrow and I am doing a hot air balloon ride for the first time and I'm so excited. I feel like I'm just living my best life. That's something I've always wanted to do. Originally I wanted to do it in Turkey, but since they have it here, might as well. So that's what I'm doing tomorrow morning. And of course it's gonna be sunrise. So that's where they're gonna pick me up at five. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get myself situated for that. And I'll probably check in with you guys tomorrow because I'm exhausted. The lighting is awful and I don't have like one of those portable ring lights, but just got out of the shower. I feel so much better. My skin was so itchy for some reason, but I just wanted to show you guys, I guess my travel skincare routine. I'm starting off with a cleanser. This I picked up from Target just in their travel size items section. It is a foaming cleanser and I used it when I was in Dubai also and it worked pretty well. It's pretty gentle on my skin. That's what I'm going to wash my face with first. Okay, so my face is nice and clean. Then I'm gonna go in with my toner. I actually can't disclose the brand <laughs> uh, just because I just did a little commercial with them. So to be announced. So after cleansing, I always tone and I like to do toner with a cotton, cotton round. I know some people spray toner on their face or like pat it into their face, but I don't know, the round just makes it feel like my skin is cleaner. This is my, oh, this is my first time being able to really clean my face since I've been in Morocco because last night I stayed at the air, well, for two nights I was traveling on the plane and then last night I stayed at the Airbnb and the sink was so small um, and it was a common area so I just didn't feel as comfortable going into a de detailed skincare routine, so I wasn't able to clean my face until I got to the Airbnb. It is so dark in here, um, but you guys know that I struggle with acne, so I've been using this every single day since I've been here and while I've been traveling just to limit the amount of breakouts that I will have while I'm here. So I'm gonna give myself a break from this because I believe it's alcohol-based. Um, and I'm going to really take some time to moisturize my skin tonight. So my big three for hydration are hyaluronic acid, of course. I use the Inky List just because it's cost effective and I'm pretty sure all hyaluronic acids are meant to do the same thing. Um, then I go in with my vitamin B, C, and E moisturizer. Again, from the Inky List. Um, I just really like the cost efficiency of the Inky List and all their products, so I'm gonna stand by them. Definitely check out the brand if you haven't already. And then lastly, to seal in all that moisture, I use an oil-based Instant Glow Serum by Merit. I am obsessed with this, you guys. I just started using it, and 
I was a little bit hesitant because every time in the past I've used an oil-based serum, it just breaks me out. It clogs my pores and I get like those little whiteheads. But I've been using this one by Merit uh, for about two weeks now and it has not clogged my pores. My skin looks instantly radiant um, and it kind of plumps my skin up a little bit and it just gives me that smooth like baby butt feeling to my skin. So I love ending my skincare routine with this one, especially when I am doing more of a moisture routine as opposed to an acne fighting routine if that makes sense. Oh my goodness my forehead is so shiny. <laughs> that is SPF and hopes and dreams. It's my birthday! so excited I'm so blessed to see another year for me my birthday is such a big deal just because you know you live to see another day you live to see another year you are you know you're growing older and I think that even though ageism is such a common thing in our community and as women it is kind of scary to grow older it really is and it definitely um, sometimes can be an insecurity for me but I just want to look at it as a blessing so shout out to my parents for giving me life especially mommy for pushing me out if you're watching this love you thanks um but yeah i'm feeling really good this morning feeling well rested feeling excited um i it's about six o'clock in the morning i woke up at five hit snooze and thankfully woke up on my own around 5 20 so i had to like rush to get ready but thankfully i didn't really do much <laughs> just put my clothes on but my driver is supposed to be picking me up at 6 15 so i'm about to walk to the location it's like three minutes away uh, where they're supposed to be picking me up and then we are doing the hot air balloon ride i'm a little nervous because i know it is cold it's like 50 degrees outside um so i have my beanie and i have an extra jacket um, but I'm just praying that I'm not like super super cold because that will really just like ruin the experience because I hate being cold uh, But I did put some leggings on under my dress. So hopefully um, That will help just a little bit, but I'm about to head out just because I want to make sure I'm there before um, The car gets there. I will check in with you guys I guess once we get to the location, I don't even know how far it is. I don't know how many other people we're picking up. Um, I'm kind of just going with the flow and hoping everything works out the way it's supposed to. So yeah, we shall see. I just got back to my Airbnb and when I tell you guys the hot air balloon was probably the best investment I could have made on this trip it was so breathtakingly beautiful if you guys are not afraid of heights and that is something you'd be interested in doing highly recommended whether you're doing it in Arizona Morocco Turkey highly recommend doing it at least once in your life it was a little nerve-wracking at first because it is scary to think that at any given moment your balloon could just deflate and you'll go plummeting 4,000 feet to the ground um, so when I thought about it in that sense I did get a little scared and at some points when I looked down to see like how high we were um, that was a little scary but overall super super fun experience there were way more people on the balloon than I was expecting. I guess the foundation of the balloon was separated into like these little squares. So there was like three to four people per square and the squares were so tiny. So we definitely got real close and comfortable in those, um, in those little pods. But I think there were maybe like 20 to 30 people on there and they asked for your weight and everything so that they can divide everyone up accordingly. I was in a pod with a couple um, so the wife was very, very friendly. She took all my photos and videos for me, and I was so thankful for that. Everyone that I've met has been really, really nice, which is great for a solo traveler. I was literally the only solo traveler on this excursion. 
Um, everyone else was either coupled up or with their friends or with their parents, but I was the only solo, solo traveler. I was also the only black person there at all, like not one. Well, I was the one, but nobody else, it was just me. I didn't feel uncomfortable or anything, um, so that was good. Like I said, everyone was nice. Pretty much everyone or the majority of people spoke French. Um, so in my car, because like you get a car that picks you up from your hotel and drives you to the location. So it was myself and two other pairs. It was a mom and a daughter and then a guy and his girlfriend, I'm assuming. But everyone spoke French, including the driver. I was the only one who spoke only English. And so the entire time there, they were all talking in French and I was kind of just like, I wish I understood but it's around 11 a.m. now and I'm kind of tired actually and it's still a little bit chilly outside so I don't feel like just like walking amongst the city so I'm about to take a nap you guys I think in the US it's like 6 a.m. Um, so I wouldn't even be asleep at this time but I don't know every time I plan a trip I always jam pack my itinerary so there's very little breathing room so the fact that I have like nap time right now is awesome and I'm gonna take advantage of it. So I'm about to take a quick like hour and a half nap and then I'm gonna get up, get dressed, freshen up and head to the spa. spa and I feel absolutely amazing if you guys don't invest in like spa treatments or like just getting a massage monthly I highly recommend it has made a world of difference in just the way my body feels I've learned so much more about like my erogenous zones and allowing another person to touch your body in a non-sexual way like in a very professional way I think it's just really beneficial it allows you to get to know your body um, without all of the kind of pressure of like sexual situation and and today's massage was 10 out of 10 highly recommend I also tried a hammam treatment for the first time which is very similar to like a Korean body scrub that I've had done in New Jersey before basically it is like a bath um, kind of like a steam room bath so someone else someone else bathes you I feel like I'm doing a terrible job at explaining this but she washed my skin with soap and then I sat in the steam room for maybe like 30 minutes it was so hot in there you guys like I was about to pass out um, and then we went over to another room where she did a like full body scrub which was similar to the Korean body scrub um, with like this glove and then we did an exfoliating treatment and then we did a mud mask um, and then she shampooed my scalp and did one last wash through and then rinsed me off and that was pretty much the whole process i booked an hour hammam treatment and an hour massage so i was there for about two and a half hours three hours um because there was some time built in between for you to just sit uh take a dip in the pool just lounge around i of course was too busy taking pictures um, but it was lovely it was so amazing I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram but I was a little bit worried about my spa experience because I had originally attempted to book with another spa that I will not disclose um, but the language barrier with booking it was very very difficult and they kept uh, trying to get me to book for two people when I was only trying to book for one the downside to being a solo traveler and so they were going to charge me more for one person just because I was single it was like a single person surcharge which I thought was it was something but it was something that I wasn't willing to do so I changed the spa location I'm glad I did because this place was absolutely amazing I personally went to uh, Le Bande de Marrakech if anyone's interested, I will put it in the description probably because I probably butchered that uh, pronunciation. I have dinner reservations at 8.30, which I'm really excited about because this restaurant actually has a like pool in the center of the restaurant. And I asked in my reservation if I could be seated by the pool. I don't know if they will honor that, but I did ask. I did a try to do it, um, but I'm debating. I bought a really pretty dress and I have my heels to wear to dinner but I feel so I have to walk a little further maybe like five minutes from my Airbnb in order to catch a taxi um, and I just feel weird walking the street in my heels and super nice dress so I'm like I don't know if I should dress down or like just wear this to dinner because this is pretty also I think I might just wear this to dinner because this is pretty and like I yeah it's fancy enough I just 
I don't know, I wanna save that dress maybe for another occasion where I feel more comfortable. I have not seen anyone like out and about super dress as dressed up as I would be if I wore that dress in heels. Um, and I haven't seen anyone in heels. So I don't know, I kinda just wanna, I, I don't wanna stand out too much. I already stand out as a bald black woman. There aren't really that many dark people here. So I do catch a lot of eyes and I don't wanna bring even more attention to myself by wearing that dress and like six inch heels. So I think I'm going to play it cool, wear this tonight um, just to play it safe, and then wear the dress for another occasion. I think that's what I'm going to do. I was really debating, but now that I'm sitting here talking through it, I think that's the best option. And I got some pretty pictures earlier today. Um, I was really only wearing the dress for like Instagram photos, but I feel like I got a decent amount of photos today that will be fine for Instagram. So. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening to me think out loud. But since my reservation isn't until 8, I am just going to ooh, probably start packing my bag. I am doing the three-day desert camp tomorrow, so I will be leaving my Airbnb for three nights. And I'm excited, but I'm a little bit nervous because, again, today when I did the hot air balloon tour, I was the only solo traveler out of a group of, like, 100 plus. And so with this experience, I'm hoping that someone else will be a solo traveler even though other people have welcomed me into their groups it would just be nice to not feel as lonely sometimes because of course if you are traveling with someone else your your natural instinct is to stick with that person and so when everyone else around me is paired up i am usually just the lone wolf thankfully today um there was a mom and her daughter and the mom kind of like took me under her wing because she she could tell that i was young like mother's instinct um so I've never felt like left out in any way, but it's my own like mental thing. Like, oh, I wish I had someone to travel with. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping maybe I will look up and someone will be another solo traveler uh, for these three days, but we shall see. But anyways, we're leaving at like seven in the morning. So I need to pack my three day bag. Um, yeah, before we leave. And it's gonna be raining for two of those days, which is very annoying. It's gonna be raining um, for at least four more days while I'm here. Uh, thankfully, I got all of the like outdoorsy stuff over with first. Y'all gonna get tired of seeing this brown door, but this is the only remotely decent spot for lighting in this Airbnb unless I go outside, but it's a little chilly. Um, but yeah, I just went for a natural beat. My skin is doing really, really well here in Morocco, and I don't want to screw it up, especially because I'm going to be away for three nights and i don't even know what those conditions are going to be like as far as the bathroom and the shower area so i just kept it light on the makeup just some natural beauty um yeah i don't know if it's a pisces in me i don't know if anybody who watches my channel is really into astrology but i freaking love my birthday like i am so obsessed with my birthday I love all the attention. I love people showing me love just because people don't show you this much love on a daily basis, even though I think we should. We should be loving on each other like 24 seven, but I know that as a human that is exhausting. So I just really appreciate my birthday. And although I feel like I treat myself pretty much all the time, my birthday is when I allow myself to really have no boundaries and just go all out. If there's no budget, anything that I want, I give it to myself ordering everything on the menu if I want it, doing all the excursions if that's what I want to do, staying at the fanciest place if that's what I want to do. It's usually not what I want to do though because I like saving money, but <laughs> you guys get the point. I try to give myself the best, the absolute best because I feel like I deserve it and I'm just really thankful and blessed and proud of myself for making it another year because not to get all sentimental, but life really, really is difficult and you never really know what could happen in your life and no one is promised tomorrow. So I'm just really blessed to be here another year and to grow older and so my birthday has always been a big deal for me and a lot of my friends like don't celebrate their birthday it's not a big thing to them but i don't know can't relate my birthday is a big deal and i will literally block anyone who does not tell me happy birthday today so if you have not told me happy birthday just know and you're watching this video just know you're probably blocked up here
shiny freaking forehead let me see if i can block that out even though i'm literally about to get in the shower but that is just that's bothering me let's see literally did not help at all y'all just gonna have to deal with my shiny freaking forehead that is the cost of being bald and not having great lighting <laughs> just got back from dinner it was so nice it was myself and one other lady that were dining solo which made me feel a little bit more comfortable everyone else was in like big groups of people or like uh partnered um and so whenever i solo travel even though i absolutely love it literally 10 out of 10 experience highly recommend Parts of me do feel uncomfortable at certain points when I am the only one that is solo because I am, I guess, projecting my own solo insecurities onto other people. And I think that they are questioning me like, oh, why is she solo? Oh, she looks so lonely. She looks so sad. Um, but there is some truth to that because when I did my solo birthday trip to Dubai last year, I actually had like three people approached me during my birthday dinner when I was dining alone and the restaurant or, or my waiter sung happy birthday to me. I had three people approach me and question me as to why I was dining alone because I'm so pretty and it's my birthday. Like, why am I alone? So a part of my insecurity does have some truth to it, but I think for the most part, I think most people are just minding their business and they don't really care that you're dining alone. But again, that insecurity in me thinks that everyone is like wondering or assuming that I'm like this lonely, sad person. And that's not the case. The case is that I am traveling internationally by myself. It is a luxury. I am fortunate enough to be able to do that and I'm happy and I'm enjoying myself. So yeah, I say all that to say it was nice. It is always nice to see someone else who is also doing the same thing as you solo by choice. Um, but yeah, dinner was good. I must say that having the entire restaurant sing happy birthday to me was definitely a very, very uncomfortable experience, but it was also so sweet. I was not expecting it. Um, my waiter asked me, oh, y'all, I thought I lost my freaking anklet. This would be the second gold anklet I've lost. But yeah, my waiter asked me like, oh, was it my birthday? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, happy birthday. And then 30 minutes later, the whole freaking orchestra comes out and sings happy birthday to me so that was um that was cool that was cute let me tell you guys so i would say that i've been spending the most money on taxis while being here granted they're like five dollars ten dollars which is not that bad compared to uber prices in new york city but when you are taking taxis everywhere it definitely adds up i will say when i originally made my itinerary i had planned to walk to most of the destinations like on my to-do list but because I like slam packed my itinerary with very little breathing room, for the most part, I've been rushing. And so I've had to get a taxi because most of the places walking would be like 40 to 45 minutes, which I would be happy to do because I do that in New York anyway. But when you're trying to get to places on time, the taxi is just the best bet. So it takes that from a 45 minute trip to like a 10 or 12 minute drive. Um, so I've definitely been spending a lot of money on taxis. But the funny thing is, um, when I called a taxi from the restaurant, which you can hail a taxi really, really quickly here, which I absolutely love because in New York, it just seems like even when the taxis don't have anyone in their car, they still pass you. Here, you put your hand up, they pull over immediately, which I love. But anyways, taxi picks me up from the restaurant. I show him um, where I'm going. I usually just pull up the GPS on my phone and then give them my phone, which I know is very dangerous, but when you don't speak the language and you don't know the city to tell them, oh, this street, this area, this part of town, that is just the easiest option. Um, and everyone seems really kind and nice here. So I'm just like praying and carrying God with me on this trip for my safety. But yeah, I tell him where I'm going. We get to my Airbnb and he already told me that it was gonna be 50 dirhams. So I had already prepared. That's pretty much what I had been paying 
um, every taxi driver. And so I, I didn't have any change, so I was gonna give him a hundred, and I asked him, like, does he have a 50 so that he can give me the 50 and I'll give him the 100? And he was like, oh, like, in his language, obviously, I'm inferring because I could, like, see his hand movements and stuff. He's like, oh, it's fine, you can just give me the 100. I was like, no, absolutely not. Give me five. I was like, <laughs> and he was like, no. Like, we literally went back and forth for like five minutes. It was five minutes of my life wasted because all you had to do was give me the 50 that you knew you already had. I could have gave you the 100. We could have called it a day. But we going back and forth, back and forth. So he gives me a 20. He's like, here, you can take the 20. I'm like, no, give me five. Give me the 50. And he gives me another 20, bringing it to 40. I'm like, no, give me 50. I'm not paying you 60 dirhams to, you drove me eight minutes up the block. Um, so finally, he's rummaging around, gives me the 50 that he already knew he had. I give him 100 and I say, you know, bon nuit, uh, merci beaucoup. Yeah, like, that, that's, that was a done deal. My French needs some work, obviously, but that was just so funny and I'm so proud of myself for like putting my foot down because definitely the first day I got here, I was more anxious, more scared, more nervous, and uh, more quiet about what I was asking for and in this case, I've learned, I'm learning the culture. So I was able to say, no, give me my 50 or I'ma just have to, I'ma have to run. I'ma have to just have, I wouldn't have done that. But in the end, I knew he would have a 50 cause it's a pretty common bill. But I am about to pack my bag for the desert camp that starts tomorrow for three nights. I'm super, oh, I don't know what that was. Three nights, super excited, a little bit nervous, but we're gonna make do, we're gonna have a good time. Um, and I'm gonna close out this vlog because I feel like it's gone on long enough. The next vlog will be the three day desert camp experience. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out the next vlog. And yeah, it's my birthday. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.